What we want to talk about today is, is this. This is the title that I have. What's in my name? What's in my name? You could also change and say, what's in your name? Something for us to think about. What's in my name? Your name is what? What people call you. It is your identity. It is something that is given to you to where other people can figure out who you are. Also for you to be able to identify yourself. Amen. Right? right? When you're younger, right, people tell you all the time. They say your name to you so you can get used to it. Get used to what it sounds like. Because you have to learn that thing as well, too. Amen. You know, I have a son now. We, we call his name Jonathan. Jonathan. We'll say it. He doesn't look at us yet, but it's okay. Right. It's okay. Because he's hearing it. And sooner or later, he will begin to realize that that's what his name is. Yeah. And it happened with all of us the same way. This is how other people are to identify who you are and for you to identify who, who you are yourself. And so long ago, there was, a, there was a major, major tie-in to what your name was. There was a lot of thought given to it. Long ago, they would say, okay, well, we want this particular person to portray these attributes. So they would look up a particular name, or they would find out what, the, what a name means. And your name described who you were. It wasn't just a title. It described your attributes as well. So they would name you based on the way that they wanted you to be, the way you seemed to be, or they will model you after somebody that they wanted you to be like. That's like if we were to have somebody today and, and name the baby uh, Steph Curry. Well, if we're doing that, I mean, it would be great if they played basketball, right? Or Michael Jordan. It would be great if they played basketball. But back then, that was a lot heavier. The names had more of a purpose then. Now, today, some of them still do. But we've gotten way, way interesting with our names today. <laughs> Y'all already know. Y'all can probably think about five of them right now. Names you ain't never heard before. We're going to name somebody uh, Sarah, right? But the name has 12 letters in it. And eight of them are silent. <laughs> and that's just to confuse everybody when they try to call who you are. His name is just Sarah. But you can usually tell a lot about the personality of somebody based on their name. At least you were supposed to be able to. It was done. Let's look actually from a biblical perspective. Let's talk about a couple of names of God. Now, I'm not necessarily trying to teach about this. Let's just use this, for example. All right. So the first one is Elohim, right? Elohim means God. All right. Uh, he is the God. He is the great God. He is the almighty, amazing God. He's sovereign. He is uh, the creator of heaven and earth. God, right? Y'all got me, right? Yeah. Now, this same person has another name, which is Rapha. All right, Rapha means healer, right? So this is the person, this is, uh, you are the God that heals me. If I can have it, you can heal it. If, if something comes along that I don't know what it is, I can pray for it and you can take care of it. Yeah. Right? All right, here's another one, Shalom. Peace, right. He can keep us uh, calm in, in the middle of our problems. Remember the God himself, the storm is out there, uh, the, the boat's out there on the storm. And he down there asleep, everybody thinking they're about to die. Jesus is getting good sleep on that boat. Yes, sir. Peace. He can walk in the middle, on water in the middle of a storm. This is who he is. Yes, sir. And if he can do all of that, what can he do to the storms in your life, right? Okay. Now, a couple of names, right? All describing the same God, but different identities. They weren't just random names. They meant something. So we understand how to identify with other people based on names. All right. But it's one of the first things we usually learn about somebody, usually their name. Now, we may not always remember it, but it's one of the first things that we learn. That's it. But one of the first things that we also should learn is how to identify with ourselves also. So let's talk about a couple of identities here. So I first want to start talking about Abram. Talk about Abram and his name. A lot of you already know where we're going, but I bet you don't know everything, and that's all right. We already know about Abram. 
Told numerous times from the Lord he would have descendants more than he could count, right? I'm going to do all of this stuff for you. I'm going to give you all of these descendants. But there was one problem with Abram. What was, what was the problem with Abram? He didn't have any kids, right? So he's supposed to have all these descendants. And he's old and has no kids. Now, of course, we already know through Hagar he had Ishmael. Attempting to try to figure out maybe this is the best course of action. But after all of this, let's, go, let's read a little bit of it. Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. It says, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. Verse 2. I will confirm my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Verse 3. Abram fell face down and God said to him, uh, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. God is saying this a lot. All right. Uh, let's see. Verse 5. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. But he had a name. What was his name? Abraham. All right, now, a lot of you all may know this, some of you all may not. For those of you all who do know, do y'all know what Abram actually meant? Now, I will tell you, if y'all reading your Bibles, it actually says right there, if y'all reading your Bibles, it's a, it's a footnote right there. Father. Means, okay, father, right, all right. How, how many of y'all who have Bibles see that? It says father, right? All right, so put something on there, and it says exalted father, right? That's what his name was. All right, so his name is becoming Abraham, which means the father of many nations. So he was the exalted father first. That was his attribute. That was his identity. But it had to be changed to father of many nations. Now, before we go too far, I want to I go ahead and give you one of my points now. I'm just really making two. Just making two. And there are two reasons that God will change a name. And I'm just giving you the first one now. And the first one is to reorder a future. I'm going to give you the second one in a minute. Two reasons God will change a name. And the first one is to reorder a future. Now, let's talk about what the different names mean. What I said a minute ago was, Abram means exalted father. Now, this was the original meaning of the name. Now, you say to yourself, well, wait a minute. Well, if he was already the exalted father, why was his name needed to be changed to father of many nations? Well, when you look at what exalted father means, there are a lot of different things that this thing means. Now, let's go back to Abram. It says this was Abram's original name meaning. Translators, they see this a couple of different ways. Now, Abram himself, this was one of the ways that you can see this, Abram himself was an exalted father. All right? That's what his name meant, so therefore he was an exalted father. But it's weird when you think about it because he had no kids. All right. But his name meant exalted father. Okay, all right, well, what else could that potentially mean? All right, so maybe that meant that he exalted his father. Maybe that, that's, what, that's what it looks like, right? He exalted his father, his father Terah, right? He loved his father. But there are other translators who say this, and this seems to make the most sense that instead of saying exalted father, it is my father is exalted, which now means that it's not talking about his heavenly, I mean his uh, spiritual father, ah, his earthly father, but more talking about his heavenly father. Because when you look at it, when God randomly speaks to him and says, look, I want you to leave everything and go to a place that I'm going to show you, he leaves, just leaves. Leaves his own father and goes to where his heavenly father is telling him to go. So they're saying to Abram, the name potentially meant that my father is exalted, meaning his heavenly father, that he exalted his heavenly father above everybody else. And this could potentially explain his future name change. Now, Abraham, let's talk about that one for a minute. Abraham means father of many. New name the Lord gave him, part of the Abrahamic blessing. Let's run down how this worked real quick. A few references to God's blessing to Abram. I'm calling him Abram because this is where he started. It's not where he finished. This is where he started. First one was Genesis 12 and 1. We don't have to go there. I'm just showing you. If you want to write it down, you can. Genesis 12 and 1 is the first mention of the blessing. God says, this is what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to give you descendants. I'm going to give you kids. I'm going to give you a nation of people under you. Abram had no kids. But God's going to give him a bunch of them. Genesis chapter 15 and 5. He says, count the stars. He reminds him of the promise that he's going to give him. Count the stars if indeed you can count them. This is what your family is going to look like. Your descendants, the people under you. Abram's like, okay, cool, but can we start with one star? Because I have none, and you're showing me everything. And in an attempt to try to figure out what that meant, him and his wife, they came together, and they decided, okay, we're going to work this thing out. We're going to have our own son. Uh, well, through Hagar. We got to do this another way. All right? And so in 16-1, Ishmael is born. Y'all remember how this went? Now, in 17 and 1, this is where his name change happens. I know I'm skipping through all of this, but I'm telling the story very quickly. God says, I'm going to give you a new name, and I'm still going to do all that great stuff I said. All these uh, chapters later, in 21 and 1, is the birth of Isaac. And it's the son of Abraham and Sarah, whose name was changed as well. And the last mention of the promise was, was in 22 and 17, after Abraham was going to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. Count the sand on the seashore. This is what your descendants are going to look like. I got something special planned for you. I got something great that you're going to do. But the only problem is, is that your name doesn't represent what I need you to do. So I got to change your name to reorder your future. Hmm. Okay, good. So God gave Abram a new name to go with his new destiny. Wow. Where you are right now doesn't represent what you need. Come on, William. So I got to change it today you, to get you further in line with where you're going. Good, now, with all of that that we just got finished saying, in both the English and the Hebraic language, Bishop taught on this like years and years and years ago, all right? Talked about the difference in the spelling, right? So when you have Abram, A-B-R-A-M, and then Abraham, A-B-R-A-H-A-M, right? Something that's added, right? What's added? It, it's an H-A, okay, all right. Now, Sarai to Sarah, what's added? Wait a minute, do I need to put them on the board? Because I'm hearing all kinds of, I'm, I'm hearing an X, and, and, and X is not in Sarai's name, okay? All right, so S-A-R-A-I, S-A-R-A-H. What is, what is added? H, right? So in both names, a letter was added. And what letter was that? H. Now, in the English, okay, cool, we just added an H. But it's something different in Hebrew. When you look at it in the Hebrew, they said that the letter H is what represents the H, Stands for God. Wow. Stands for God. I promise I'm not making it up. So Abram changed his name to Abraham. The only difference was God added him to the name. Yeah. He added an H. Like I said, representing who he was. So where he didn't physically have the presence in his name, now he did. And uh, Charles, let's back up just a little bit to the references I was talking about a minute ago. 12 and 1, uh, Genesis 12 and 1, first mention of the blessing. You see that? I'm going to pull that back up and show you something. All right, first mention of the blessing, right? This is Abram, right? The next one says uh, 15 to 5, count the stars. God is saying this is what I'm going to do, right? Yeah. Now, this is Abram, all right? Now, 16 and 1, Ishmael is born. Who is this? Abram, right? I promise I'm not trying to trick y'all. Abram, this is Abram when Ishmael is born. Now, 17 and 1, his name is changed to Abraham, but we just learned that what happens was it wasn't just a name change. God put his presence on his name. Yeah. And the very next instance that we have in 21 and 1, the birth of Isaac. 
So it was the presence of God that caused something that was impossible in this man's life to happen. Sometimes God has to remind us that it's not our own power, but it's his that accomplishes stuff. Abram, you're trying to do this on your own. But I'm going to change your name and I'm going to reorder your future. So I told you the first one. I'm going to go ahead and give you the second one now. Two reasons God will change your name. The first one is to reorder your future. And the second one is to reshape an identity. Which I'll think about that one for a second. To reorder a future. Reorder means to change. To change a future, we could say it that way too. Change a destiny. Change a ladder. Number two says to reshape an identity. Let's talk about somebody who needed the reshaping of their identity. Let's look at Jacob. Jacob was the son of Isaac and Rebekah. Genesis chapter 25 and 24. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. The first, was to come, the first to come out was red, and his whole body was like a hairy garment, so they named him Esau. Who was the first? Esau. All right. After this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel, so he was named Jacob. All right, so let's just stop right there. Now, Scripture says that Jacob was named, why? He was given a name because he was grasping Esau's heel. That's why he was named. Oh, man, you know what? I'm, look, we're praying about a name. God, help me. Oh, he holding on to the other baby. You know what? We're going to call you Jacob. They called him Jacob because of that. But let's talk about this name for a second. But we're going to do it through Scripture. Three verses later, verse 29, when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from uh, the open country, famished. Verse 30, he said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. This is also why he was called Edom. Jacob replied, first sell me your birthright. See, the reason he was holding on to his heel, because Jacob wanted to be born first. He didn't quite make it, so he came out hanging on to the other baby, and from all of that time, it was something important about being the first. Jacob said, first sell me your birthright. Look, I'm about to die, Esau said. What good is this birthright to me? Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave some uh, bread and some little stew. He ate and drank, then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. So we know Jacob set himself up to steal the birthright and the blessing, right, from his brother. Now, how did this happen? Isaac had basically lost all his sight. He couldn't see anymore. Now, the Bible says he could see a little bit, but he really, he really couldn't see. Jacob had his mother fix Isaac's favorite meal. Y'all know the story, but we got to go through it just a little bit. Jacob dressed himself and covered himself with fur to trick his own father into the blessing. And this is the bad part. Chapter 27, uh, verse 24. Are you really my son, Esau, he asked. This is Isaac talking. Are you really my son, Esau? I am, he replied. Now, the I am is Jacob. He lied to his father in his face. And the reason he's asking him is because his hair is still there a little bit. Man, you, you know, all of this stuff seems to make you seem like Esau, but you sound like Jacob. I, I don't, I, I got a cold. I, I don't, I, you know, something, I, I, yeah. And so let's see, verse 25, what does he say? Uh, my son, bring me some of your game to eat that I may give you my blessing. He was like, okay, well, you know, there's only one way that I seem to like this thing. Esau knows how to prepare it just like that. But of course, Rebecca knew how to do it too, and she showed Jacob how to do it. So now Jacob has this mystery, you know, venison here that Isaac just so happens to love a certain kind of way but this was all part of the plan. This is all part of the trick, right? Y'all follow me, right? Okay, so Jacob brought it to him and he ate and he brought some wine and he drank. Then his father Isaac said, come here and kiss me, my son. See, all of these tests, right? You know, like he's saying all of this lovely stuff, but man, something just isn't right about all of this.
I'm hearing my son and kids me. See, remember, Esau was a hairy guy. Jacob didn't really have any hair at all. Esau took all of it, right? So he was the one that just, he didn't have any hair, for, for real, okay? Not like his brother. So he was like, man, I'm going to get stuck. I'm going to get pricked. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feel all of this when he comes to kiss me. 27. So he went and kissed him. When Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, because he put on all of this stuff to seem like Esau, he blessed him and said, ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. So listen to this blessing, y'all. And i explain how important this is real quick. Verse 28 says, May God give you of heaven's dew and of earth's richness and abundance of grain and new wine. May nations serve you and peoples bow down to you. Then say, you all. It says to you. This blessing was meant for Esau. But it's now going to Jacob. Be Lord over your brothers. And may the sons of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed and those who bless you be blessed. Now, to some of us, they may just sound like words. But when you have a God that will honor the words that you speak, there was a whole lot that he just got from here that should have gone to his brother. Verse 30 says, after Isaac finished blessing him and Jacob has... Uh, uh, secretly left his father's presence, his brother Esau came in from hunting. It's almost like as soon as he leaves, the exact same thing's going to happen all over again. All right, uh, next, next, next uh, scripture. Yeah, he, let's see here. He too prepared some tasty food and brought it to his father. This was almost the exact same. Then he said to him, my father, sit up and eat some of my gain so that you may give me your blessing. 32. I was like, wait, what? His father Isaac asked him, who are you? Who are you? I was like, I mean, Esau was like, what? I'm your son, your firstborn. Isaac trembled violently and said, who was it then? And hunted game and brought it to me. I ate it just before you came, and I blessed him, and indeed he will be blessed. Blessing's been given now, son. When Esau heard his father's words, he burst out with a loud and bitter cry and said to his father, bless me too. Give me something. Is there anything left in there that you can give me? Verse 35. But he said, your brother came deceitfully and took your blessing. Esau said, isn't he rightly named Jacob? Some of y'all saying that. Isn't he rightly named Jacob? He has deceived me these two times. He took my birthright and now he's taking my blessing. Then he asked, basically, which was again, haven't you reserved any blessing for me? Isaac answered Esau, I have made him Lord over you. And have made all of his relatives, let's see, made all his relatives his servants, and I've sustained him with grain and new wine. So what can I possibly do for you? He got everything, and you won't have to serve him. What can I give you? This is bad, y'all. Next verse. Esau said to his father, do you have only one blessing? He asked him so many different times, like, man, do you got any pennies on you? Do you got something that I can get? You gave it all away to the first one. Uh -huh. okay. You got some meat in the back. Can, I mean, can I get something? Right. Esau said to his father, do you have only one blessing? Bless me too. Then he wept aloud. 39, his father Isaac answered him. Your dwelling will be away from the earth's riches, away from the dew of heaven above. Because he already gave that. Now he's telling them what's going to happen to him. Mm. You will live by the sword and you will serve your brother. Okay. But when you grow restless, you will throw the yoke from off your neck. Mm. Now, Esau made a statement a little earlier. He said, isn't he rightly named Jacob? Jacob. Let's talk about Jacob for a quick second. What does Jacob mean? It's a planter, right? Okay, I mean, do we really know what that meant? Because like, when I was a kid and I heard it, I thought he just planted trees. I didn't know exactly what that meant. I wasn't sure. Y'all know what that means? Somebody else said a swindler, right? Yeah, that was another word for the same thing. Deceiver, right? He was a cheat. He was a con man. He was a trickster. What'd you say? A hustler, right. 
Well, I, 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 didn't, I said it too private, didn't I? A hustler, right? No, he, he was a hustler, right, okay. He was a backstabber. They smile on your face all the time. They wanted to take your place. The backstabbers. Now we all know what supplanter means. That's what his name was. But he was given his name because even as a child, he was fighting for that birthright. But this was not Jacob's intended future. Jacob's name was changed. Genesis chapter 32, verse 24. So Jacob was left alone, and the man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Now, let me ask this question real quick. Well, oh, I keep going. I keep going. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. The man asked him, what's your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but, but Israel, because you struggle with God and with men and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. Now, here's the question. Why did Jacob struggle with God all night? Oh, 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 wait a minute, I might have jumped the gun a little bit. The, the, the name Israel means that he struggled with God. Right. Okay, all right, now, let me say that. The name means that he struggled with God. Now, the question is, why did Jacob struggle with God all night? What y'all think? All right, I, I hear it up here in the front. I hear a little bit. What y'all think, right? We actually read in the scripture. He was, he, was, he was looking for something, right? He was looking for a blessing. He realized there was something about this guy and he's like, man, look, I don't know where you're going, and I don't know what time you got to be there, but you're not leaving me until I get a blessing from you. <laughs> Jacob realized God had a power to bless him. So he became Israel because he wrestled with God and assisted a blessing. Jacob realized God had a power to bless him. See, all of this time, Jacob had been trying to figure out ways to do it on his own. But up to a certain point, now that his own brother's trying to kill him and all this other stuff is happening in his life, there's only so much that he can do before he realizes that he has to lean on somebody else for help. And he realized that God can give him something he doesn't have on his own. So wherever you are, God, and wherever you're trying to go, I can't let you out of my presence until you bless me. And God looks at him and says, well, what's your name? Mm -hmm. He said, well, my name is Jacob. Well, we're not going to call you that anymore. We're going to call you Israel. And now that your name is Israel, now we're going to bless you. Mm. Y'all understand that? Y'all see how that works? Yeah. He couldn't get the blessing until his name was changed. Yes, sir. God had to reshape his identity before he could give him something. Yeah. Because as Jacob, you can't handle it. But as Israel, you can Verse 28 says, your name will no longer be swindler or supplanter. You're not going to be a cheat anymore. That is not who you are. He changed the names of people because he had to change his identity. No longer will people call you this. No longer will people call you a cheat, a con man, a backstabber, a hustler, a supplanter. A swindler. They're going to start calling you this. Because it's through this name that I'm going to do something different with you. I'm going to tell you again, two reasons God will change the name. The first is to reorder a future, and the second is to reshape an identity. Now, let me go ahead and cut to this. Everybody in here has been given a new name. Every one of you has been given a new name. I already told you the reasons. First one was to reorder your future. And the second one is to reshape your identity. Now, well, where you get to, he give us a new name, and what is it? Well, I'm going to get there. How is he giving us a new name? Well, we got a scripture for that. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, 
He is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. Abram's name was changed from exalted father to the father of many because that was his destiny. God has changed you from what you were into what you're going to be. What does that mean? That the name change that God has for you means that your future is going to be different. Whatever the enemy thought he had planned for you, your name has been changed. And you are a new creation in God, and now your future is different. Something new because God has changed you. What new names has God given us? We won't look up the scriptures. I just write them. You, I, I got them up here for you to write them down. What is your new name? You got a bunch of new names. I'm going to give you one of them right now. The first one is blessed. Mm-hmm. Ephesians chapter 1 and 3. Y'all put that down. That is my new name. I am blessed. The second one is sons and daughters and an heir. That is your new name. Scripture there, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. John 1, verse 12 and 13. Galatians chapter 4, verse 7. So he's called you blessed. He's called you sons and daughters and heir. He's also called you his treasure possession. His treasure possession. So Deuteronomy chapter 7 and 6. Now, this is only a few of them. I'm not going to write down every one of them. We'd be here all day. God got so many names for us. The next one is chosen with a purpose. Remember, we might be looking for names like John and Paul and Sally and all of this. But no, 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 no. We're talking about identities here. Your new identity is that you are blessed and that you are sons and daughters and an heir. Your new identity is that you are now his treasure possession and you are chosen with a purpose. Now, there is power in knowing your identity. There is power in knowing your name. And why is that? Listen here. When you know your name, you stop responding to people who call you out of it. You in a room and somebody says something that's not your name, you're not even finna look. Because you know they're not talking to you. Because you know your identity. Why is it any different with this? Too many times we respond to the names that are not what God calls us. Y'all know people want to stay reminding you of who you used to be, right? What you used to do. You ain't that say. Why you change on me? You didn't change. We do it to ourselves. We beat ourselves up over the stuff that we used to do. But we're a new creation now. God's given us a new identity. Just like Jacob. It was the same thing that was said to him. You will no longer be called Jacob. That's the same thing to you. You will no longer be called that nasty stuff that people used to call you. This is how you are to identify yourself now. What's your new identity? Here's another one. Accepted by God and no longer condemned. That's why we can sing the song that we sung a minute ago. For your goodness and your mercy toward me, I can offer you praise because you have accepted me and removed the condemnation against me. And if you're not going to hold it against me, why should anybody else do that? What's another one? Justified and redeemed. These are the identities. The same way that one God can have many different attributes. These are now your new attributes. He calls us friends. Yeah. 
do the next one. We are God's masterpiece. This is who we are. Don't go by what somebody else tells you. It's so much stuff out there. People had you believing you frogs before too long. Go by what God tells you. And then finally, we are God's beloved. Many of us have been answering to the wrong identity for too long because we don't know who we are. I'll say this right here and then we'll finish up. It's the two things we talked about already. Two reasons God will change a name. The first one is to reorder a future. When you came to know Christ, your future was changed. Where you were going and now where you are going were two totally different places. The people that were going to cross your path and the people who will cross your path are two totally different groups of people. The, the things that you might have had versus the blessings you're about to walk into are two totally different things. But you understand that because your name has changed, because you have a new identity, this is how you get the stuff. Your future has changed. Now let's talk about reshaping the identity. God says you got to stop letting people remind you who you used to be. you got to change some of these nicknames that you got. People used to know you a certain kind of way back then. Need to be like the angel told Jacob, but God told Jacob, you will no longer be called this anymore. This is who you are. Some of y'all got to tell these folks, look, I don't know who that is, but they've been gone for years and they're not coming back. There was a funeral for them years ago. And if you don't know me, <laughs> let me introduce you. <laughs> Give you my new name. I'm a child of the king. I am blessed. I am beloved. I am his masterpiece. I am the greatness of God. I am more than a conqueror. I am his. God has changed our name and therefore he has changed our destiny and reshaped Thank you, Lord. our identity. Thank you, Lord. Amen, that's it.